Hello and welcome to the video on the relationship between disjoint events and independent events. Students tend to have a lot of trouble with this concept so you may have to watch this video a couple times to really understand what's going on. Okay, so let's get started with, before I start defining things, let's start, start with a common mistake. Okay, and one reason I know it's a common mistake other than my students making it all the time is I used to make it all the time until I started spending a lot more time and understanding what's going on um, I had a lot of trouble doing this and this was a mistake I used to make all the time and, and, and this is a, it's very easy to see on the picture so we have a Venn diagram with two events okay and think of two events that are joint so they're joint so they are connected here so look they're connected so this is my B and this area in the middle are the outcomes that are in common. So we call this the set of A and B. Okay, this is A and B. All right, so these are joint. So now let me give you some probabilities. Okay, I'm going to just make this up and I'm going to say the probability of A is 0 0.7. I'm going to say the probability of B is 0. Point, let's say 6. Okay, now look at this. Th these can't be disjoint because, that, I mean, they have to be joint because if you add these up, that they're more than one. So there's some portion of both of these that are together, and that's in this probability of A and B, which um, I won't even show you. But, but they'll get this, and then they'll turn around, and they'll ask, what's the probability of A and B? Okay? And this is a mistake everybody sees. They just automatically see this. They see these, which are joint. These two are joint. And they just assume that A and B are independent. And they go right to rule five, which says if two events are independent, then I'm allowed to multiply their probabilities. Okay? And in this case, they take the probability of A, which is 0.7, and they take the probability of B, which is 0.6, and they multiply them together, and they get 0.42, and they turn around and they say that's the answer. But this is wrong, okay? Because when two events are joint, okay, well, I shouldn't say it's wrong yet. It could be right, but when two, um, when two events are joint, it, they, the two events could be independent, or they could be not independent okay there's only one situation okay that we know when when this happens this will be this will be um, either or independent or not independent okay and that only happens in one situation okay and um, on the next page I talk about this more so let's talk about what we do know and this is the only thing that only thing that we do know and I'll show it mathematically I always had trouble with the books um, the books explanation so I kinda learned this way from somebody and I think it's a great way it's more mathematical approach but it's good so if these are joint we can't say anything from disjoint they could be either way and I'll show you examples of that on the next page but let's or not disjoint up here so let's talk about if they are joint Okay, this is the only way we could tell. If A and B, if A and B are mutually exclusive. I'll start using mutually exclusive also. That means they have no outcomes in common. They're, dis, they're disjoint. They're disjoint. Okay, so so let's look at this on a mathematical approach. If they have no outcomes in common, let's see this. What's the probability that A and B can occur if they have no outcomes in common at the same time? What's the probability of A and B can occur? Okay, and you guys should know that it's zero. Okay, there's no chance that A and B are going to occur because it's not connected. It's empty. It's empty. Sometimes they call this the empty set, okay, when they're not connected, okay? So, um, 
I won't get into that maybe a little later. Let's just set notation. Okay, so if A and B are mutually exclusive disjoint, so this is this. So let's say, what's the formula formula for independence? Independence, okay, for A and B, okay? So we know, this is what we know. If the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times B, okay, then A and B are independent. Okay? So 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 let's look at this formula. Let's talk about what we know. If they're disjoint, if A and B are disjoint, so we know A and B are disjoint. So by knowing that they're disjoint, we know that the probability of A and B is zero. So we know this right here is equal to zero. So the only way that A and the only way that A and B could be independent if this side is zero also. So if I could show mathematically that the right side that the probability of A times the probability of zero, then A and B are independent. Okay? If I could show that this is not zero, then A and B are not independent. So let's look at this. Since this actually has an area to it, see these this is this is the the event. The event is a list of outcomes. So this is something, this is nothing. So the probability of A is greater than zero. It's not zero. It's something here. Same thing with B. Look at B. There's an area there. So this is something also. So the probability of B will also be greater than zero. Well, we know by mathematics that a number greater than zero, so, so if this is greater than zero, so the probability of A times the probability of B, if I multiply two numbers that are greater than zero with each other, you also get a number greater than zero. Okay? So I just showed that this is not zero. This is greater than zero. Greater than zero. Okay? Hence, the only way that that these two events would be independent is if this side was equal to this side. If that was true, then the, then they're independent. But I just showed for disjoint events, this side is zero, this side is greater than uh, zero. So disjoint events are not independent. Okay, that's the key right there. And I just showed you why. Disjoint, disjoint events are not independent. Okay, sometimes if you try to think about this logically, you're going to think that they are independent. Because when they're not connected, you start thinking to yourself and say, well, A is not connected to B, so they must not affect each other, so they must be independent. But that's not true. Disjoint events are not independent. So let's look at this this other side on on the page. And I'm going to show you an example. If you have joint, you just cannot automatically go to this. I've done it a million times myself. I see this thing in the middle and I just automatically want to start multiplying. Okay, but you can't just jump to multiplication. Okay, because sometimes this isn't true. Okay, sometimes your joint events are not independent, so you can't use this formula. Okay, and, and, and I'll try to show it to you real quick. So two events with outcomes in common. Two events with outcomes in common. Okay, that's A and B. They're joint. So joint, joint events, A and B, could be independent or not independent. Okay, and, and I'll show you two quick examples, and I'm going to go fast, but I'm going to show you two quick examples where, um, where this happens. So let's talk about um, my S is rolling a die, 1 through 6. A is getting an even number, and B is getting a um, B is getting a one, a two, or a five. So look at these. Even would be two, four, and six. So are these joint or are these disjoint? Okay, these are joint. Okay. So now let's check to see if they're independent. 
They're joint. We know they're joint. If I did this in a Venn diagram, this is what it would look like. Okay, I'd have a circle here and a circle here. This is my A, this is my B. Okay, so what even numbers, which event is in common? I have a 2 here and I have a 2 here. So that 2 would go in the middle. Let me change the color. That 2 is the event in common with B and A. Okay, so now let's look at the other two. There's a 4 and there's a 6. These are the outcomes in A, this big A, and the outcomes in B, there's a 1 and a 5 over here. So now let's test to see if these are independent or not. So I get the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. And all this is just to prove that if they're joint, you just can't automatically do this formula. So let's see if it's true. So the, what's the probability of A and B? How many are in A and B? So A and B consists of two. So I have one outcome. There's only one outcome. How many are in here? Six. So this would be one over six. Okay? Equals. What's the probability of A? Okay, what's probably going to get an even number? So the probability of A is um, a half. Oh, I, I did the one that's not going to be independent. Okay, let, let, let's, let's stick with this. This is joint. And the probability of B is also, what's the probability you get B? One, two, five. That's three events out of six, so it's going to be a half. Okay? So now one sixth is not equal to one fourth. Okay, so these are joint. These are joint and they are not independent. If they were independent, these two would match up. Okay? So let's look at another example and see if I could get um, two joint events that are independent. Okay, so we're going to use the same sample space, 1 through 6. And I'm going to do A is being an odd. So 1, 3, and 5. And B is going to be, let's say, um, 2 and 5. 2 and 5. Okay, so let's look at this in a Venn diagram. Okay, I have two events. My A and my B. So which 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 outcome is in common? I got a 5 in common, so that's my AND because five's in A and B, that's the middle here. And then what do I have outside of 5, which is 1 and a 3, and what do I have outside of this 5 on B, which is a 2. Okay, so that's how you set up the Venn diagram. So let's look at this. What's the probability that you get A and a B? So A and B is a 5, so that's going to be 1 sixth. And remember, if these are independent, then the probability of A times the probability of B will equal, this, needs to, this side needs to equal 1 sixth. If this equals 1 sixth, then A and B are independent. Okay, so let's check. What's the probability of A? The probability of A is 1 half. Correct? What's the probability of B? Probability of B is 2 sixths, which is, um, you could reduce this here, but this is going to be 2 over 12, but reduce 2 over 12 and you get 1 over 6. Okay? So I just showed you, I just showed you two joint events that are, two joint events that are independent very important okay two joint events so joint events could be not independent or they could be independent but how about disjoint events disjoint events are always not independent okay this is the important thing to know when you start using your formulas because if they're disjoint you automatically know you can't use this formula okay 
If they're disjoint, you cannot use this formula, okay? Um, because they're not independent. Even when they're joint, you can't just jump to this formula, okay? Then some more testing has to be to be uh, known. So we always could go from disjoint to independent, but you never could go backwards. Okay, you never could go from independence to um, disjoint. Doesn't go both ways. Okay, so just make sure you know this. But this is a very key, very important term to know. I'm going to test you on it, and it may just just look like that. Okay, I'm not going to test you the why. I'm going to test you to make sure you understand this line. All right. So thanks for watching. If you don't get this, watch it over again. Make sure you come talk to me. Have a nice day.